Hello and a very warm welcome to Hindustan Times Leadership Studio, a coveted club where we get thought leaders to understand about better conversations for tomorrow. With me is a very special guest today. With me is Gurpreet Bhatia, who is the CEO of LiveGuard Energy Technology Private Limited. <laughs> yeah, Gurpreet, thank you for talking to us. And Delighted to be here. Yeah, my first question to you really is that you know the major point of conversation across all boardrooms in the country right now is. this vision that the country has of becoming a 5 trillion economy by 2025 i really want to understand from you that do you think it's realistic and what perhaps could be the challenges as a country to realize that vision because this conversation is really about leadership and leaders like you do this day in and day out for yourself right set up a target and achieve that so i want to sort of extrapolate that at a country level do you think we can really achieve this or not I think uh, from my perspective uh, achievement of this goal is immaterial. I think the starting point of setting an ambitious goal is a great start in itself. And we heard today several speakers talk about it. Michael Phelps talk about it that how setting an ambitious goal is so critical. Uh, and that's a fabulous start in itself. I'm very proud and uh, and and feel privileged to be part of an indian right now because that journey of sustainable growth that the structural change the country is going through uh, makes me very confident that it's an achievable goal uh, and and we've seen several initiatives uh, the government and industry is taking according to me one of the big challenge uh, uh, to realize that goal would be education because although we claim we are a very young country but a young population who's not skilled enough and doesn't have the uh, necessary education and background to be employable uh, for the future i see that as a key challenge uh, i think uh, both the government and a lot of uh, private enterprise has identified this as a key challenge and working towards it uh, i have no doubt that with the mission and the vision that we have for our country even this would be overcome and we would be a highly skilled country to really progress and be the country of the 5 trillion dollar economy that we talk about but education i see as a very key area of focus uh, for us our development you spoke about education and skilling the need to skilling to realize that vision i want to understand that you know manufacturing is a subject you know that's what you really do day in and day out you're part of that industry how critical is manufacturing in the space and sector to realize that growth and vision and then we can perhaps talk about the challenges that you are facing the way you are building out your enterprise so that's a great question we are a very young company we are like 5 year old <laughs> and uh, in 5 years we like compounding each year by about 60 70% we are doubling our business and to double our business manufacturing is quite critical uh, in the energy storage space Uh, and we are very pleased that in this journey we've not only invested well in advance uh, that shows our confidence in our product and services reaching to the consumers and hence investing in advance with the scale and size of manufacturing uh, that we have set up uh, i think in a sp- in a span of last 18 months we spent it uh, we've invested close to about 300 crores in expanding our uh, a portfolio of uh, manufacturing footprint in himachal the progress we've seen in terms of ease of setting up these facilities what they were like 10 15 years ago we set up our first factory in 2006 and now six others were set up in the last 12 18 months uh, we've not identified any big challenge uh, including labor was a conversation today yeah uh, although getting skilled labor was a challenge However it it it's an it's more incumbent on the enterprise itself what their practices human practices are how they engage with their people and I I'm really pleased to sh- uh, share uh, that you know we never even have a union as far as our plant is concerned that's important because that's that's a big detrimental to progress and uh, we've actually focused on all the right people processes and people engagement uh, right now we are very satisfied touchwood uh, Uh, the expansion has gone uh, gone on full uh, full throttle and we've already announced future plans i mean if the world is talking of ev in india lithium in india we've actively setting up uh, manufacturing setup for lithium here 
So we are very excited about the whole manufacturing opportunity that the country provides. It's interesting you mentioned about the EV and lithium opportunity. You know, I want to understand from you, when can India be fully EV ready? So while there seems to be a lot of intent from the top to really realize that vision, but are we really ready to sort of have EV on a mass scale? I mean, what do you think? But the disruption is really looking and staring at us right in front of our eyes, right? How right. do we sort of lap up this opportunity then? I've been uh, a strong proponent that India is already EV. It's already EV? Already EV. Uh, Why do you say that? We've got, I mean, I think uh, what the media and consumers look at EV is private motorists, passenger cars, as the mass EV. However, if you if you look back at the last three, four years, uh, we don't realize that there are about 1.5 million electric e-rickshaws already on Indian roads, which is the last mile connectivity. And today again, the Prime Minister talked of really deep root structural changes. Now this 1.5 million e-rickshaws are providing our consumers that last mile connectivity and it's it's a significant market and, and just pleased to share today our group has launched its own EV vehicle. Wow. And 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 uh, looking ahead. So EV is the pillar of growth for you as you go forward? Uh, both from an energy storage battery perspective and one of the verticals of the group, the SAR group, is going to be EV. Now, that's already happened. Now your question is, when are we going to be fully electric? Now that's a stargazing. I mean, when we look at the world, not even five, six percent of the vehicle population is EV right now. But from our group perspective, we strongly believe that the small commercial and passenger, which is the three-wheeler autos, e-rickshaws, small loaders, are going to be EV very quickly because of the aggregators coming in. Second area of, of focus for us is the, uh, the two-wheelers. Mm -hmm. Two wheelers are going to, I, we personally feel that that's an area where uh, the country is going to move to EV very, very rapidly. Bus, mass transport could be another se sector. Private motorist, I think it'll take its own journey. Our personal view is that uh, this is going to be like next four, five years, an accelerated growth, a lot of learning curve for the country. New regulations will come in as we learn along. And then there will be some stability after about four or five years and then the growth will happen. So it's an exciting space. But for us, I think small passenger commercial two wheeler is the big EV disruption likely to happen, uh, which is, I would say, in the next 24 to 36 months. So your point is that we began well yeah. in terms of with e-rickshaws, the advent happened on the right note. And now we are taking it to two wheelers, three wheelers. That's where the progression is happening gradually. So in the is, private motorist side. In the private motorist side. Yes. Okay. Tell me one thing, Gurpreet. Are there any examples that we can follow as a nation in our transition to EV? And as a company, are you looking at some models in the West as the, as the way you sort of transgress on this journey of you know EV? That's a great question. Uh, I think uh, the way we look at it is that India is so unique. <laughs> in itself, yeah. uh, with, you know, with the diversity that we have. And uh, my approach uh, to, uh, to any solution from an Indian context is understand the application in the Indian context and give a solution what is tailor-made for the Indian consumer. Uh, there's because no our challenges are different. There, our challenges are very different. Hmm. Uh, there is no global kind of playbook playbook that you could just come and copy paste, and, uh, copy paste it here i mean even if you look at an e-rickshaw designed for four people carry yeah. six it's a good point yeah so i think the whole approach of the industry is that make something tailor-made for the country the challenges that we have the kind of uh, uh, people and consumers that we are who are so value seekers uh, it's going to be difficult to just uh, pick up something from the world and paste it here yes there are learnings of technology I think the lithium technology, what China has developed and other countries have developed is way ahead. Uh, and that's something uh, to collaborate on, uh, take learnings, adapt, and then deliver and execute from an Indian context. Thank so you, Gurpreet. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you.